Joining us live in the studio is Achike Chude, who is a public affairs analyst. Good morning, Mr. Chude. Good morning. And it's good to have you here. It's a pleasure always, you I'm know sure, that. <laughs> I'm sure. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Yeah. I'm sure you saw that video. What, what's your thought on it? So there is a video, there is a communication from CBN. Mm. Well, well, I mean, I saw the video and uh, I saw a hardcore capitalist, you know, talking, uh, bent on... Um, uh, pro, you know, uh, maximizing uh, profits and then uh, reducing uh, costs. And uh, uh, as these things go, um, it's usually the the workers, the ordinary workers that uh, face uh, the music. Mm -hmm. um, of course, we all know what is going on. We are in an unprecedented, extraordinary situation right. uh, with this COVID-19. And the implication has been severe uh, globally. It has obtained all manners of uh, projection, economic projections, political, you know, and created the, uh, you know, confusion uh, within society, and created confusion, serious confusion within society, and uh, the, the, this, and, and so it, what we are seeing with, um, I mean, from the uh, MD of uh, Access Bank is uh, uh, a reflection of uh, the panic that uh, has been generated by this uh, COVID-19 uh, situation. And so you have the impression that they are only reacting to what is going on. Uh, but I think uh, there is more to it uh, because uh, in that particular address, he looked at a scenario post COVID-19 scenario, you know, and uh, he looked at a post COVID-19 scenario and uh, he made a projection really that should be worrisome. And that uh, is the fact that um, uh, they have been able to determine and discern from what has been going on that perhaps even after the COVID-19, when there's a normalization of uh, the situation, uh, you know, that they might not need as many workers as they currently have. Mm -hmm. uh, so what it means is that uh, they are going to lay off so many more people beyond even COVID-19, even when situation comes back to normal. And uh, that is what worries me. Right. And again, when he talks about the sacrifice that he has to make, I just smile. I saw you. 40%, uh, yes, uh, you know, of 40%, what is 40? I mean, at the end of the day, the 60% that is left might be enough, might be about, you know, uh, uh, enough to feed about, uh, take care of uh, a thousand uh, employees of uh, Access Bank. Because they, they earn so much, uh, some of this, especially at that level, from mid-management uh, level to the very high, you know, level or hierarchy of uh, the banks. What they earn, sometimes you could, you could say that... Um, that uh, they are not uh, morally justifiable. But you can if argue you that what... he is trying to lead from the front, not trying to cut short no, your uh, thoughts there. No, 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 no. Of course, he is trying to lead from the front. But I mean, I, I think he should have just uh, maybe kept quiet about that. Um, uh, because the reality is that uh, what uh, uh, the balance of what is going to be getting, the 60%, like I said, might be about uh, maybe uh, the you know, take home pay of about a thousand of uh, the staffs that are going to be laid off ultimately at the end of the day because they are earning so much mm -hmm. uh, in terms of uh, upper management and especially at that level. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so I, I do not see that as much of a sacrifice. You can imagine what 40% uh, you know, off from what you're going to pay a teller. A teller, some of them earn as low as, as 40,000 naira, 50,000 naira. So take off 40% from that, and then you realize that he cannot basically do anything mm -hmm. with that money. He cannot take care of uh, the health of his family. He cannot take care of uh, the rent for his family. He cannot take care, or she cannot take care of uh, electricity bills and so many other things. And so that is the difference. I must be able to establish mm -hmm. you know, uh, that difference. But I think the wonderful thing really is that uh, the CBN has stepped in uh, because it is is something that caused a lot of panic within the system and the reality is that that would have opened the floodgate for so many other organizations mm -hmm. wanting to uh, uh, do something like this it is worrisome and that is not the approach that we are seeing in those countries that we are trying to emulate we want to emulate all the time you see instances for instance in, in the united kingdom and some other places where government takes over the payment of 80 percent payment of the salaries of private or, you know, workers for private enterprises, private organizations, and so on. That is that gives you an idea of the interest that a government has in the welfare, mm -hmm. you know, condition of its people. But in Nigeria, it's a completely different thing. So thank God that the CBN has stepped in. But it's one thing, 
it will, you know, words are one thing, but to be able to live up to your words is another thing. We were, we, I mean, we had instances when the uh, Bureau for Public Enterprises, when most of some government enterprises were being privatized, and the basis or the condition for the privatization was that nobody must lose his job. Uh, you know, that uh, the, the new owners must make sure that jobs are not lost. But that was not what we saw. Uh, in, in most cases, immediately they, they bought over those um, uh, enterprises. The first thing they did was to embark on, you know, layoff of, of staff. And the federal government, were, you know, could not uh, uh, find itself uh, unable, you know, to do anything about it. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, still on this matter, one would say there's a business angle to it, which you're trying to, which you try to explain in your beginning, saying you are seeing a hardcore capitalist. Um, how should the bank also, and other businesses, how should they handle this situation where, you know, you're pressed uh, economically, but you also want to, you're concerned, genuinely concerned about the welfare of your people. But, you know, how do you reconcile both in the face of uh, COVID-19, which, like you said, was, is quite unprecedented? You know, we have this tendency to want to borrow certain things from uh, the West, uh, want to borrow their, their politics, uh, you know, and their, uh, you know, political institutions want to borrow their economy, want to borrow so many things that happen. And yet, you know, uh, when it comes to uh, some of the beautiful things that are associated with them, you know, we, we don't do those ones. And then it's, it's those ones that uh, should be discarded that we pick. And I will just give you an instance. For instance, we talk about, you know, capitalism, a system of government mm -hmm. today, for instance. And uh, Nigeria is kind of, sometimes you find it difficult to know what exactly kind of government we are running. It's supposed to be a capitalist government. Sometimes you don't know whether it's a mixed economy. But they have embarked on a privatization spree and all that. They talk about deregulation and all that. But you look at um, West, that is the, the citadel of capitalism. You see some of the social infrastructure they are putting in place for the citizens. You talk about, you know, food stamps. You talk about, you know, pro provision of homes mm -hmm. for those people, for the homeless and all of that. Uh, you know, so this is what, these are some of the social, you know, baskets that they have been able to, pro you know, uh, 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 put on ground for their people. In this country, we do not have such. And I just talked about uh, United Kingdom, for instance, right. taking over the 80%. responsibilities, 80% of certain people working in the private sector. Now, this is a government that uh, believes, that cares for the interests and the welfare of its people. So in this place, I mean, Nigeria, it's a completely different thing. I, I, like I said, it's good the CBN stepped in. Now, we all understand the fact that, like I said, we're in an extraordinary situation. Right. And what we are being assailed with are things, I mean, something that I, um, this generation, you know, of humanity has never seen before. Sure. Uh, you know, so it's novel. And so the response itself, in a way, has to be novel. But it is a response that must have a human face, ultimately, at the, <clears throat> at the end of the day. Before now, banks, regardless of the economic situation in this country, have made tremendous amounts of you know, uh, profit. And you see all these profits, you see these profits being announced you know, at the end of the day. Now, uh, yes, they must respond to what is going on. Mm -hmm. But in what way and manner are they going to respond? Are they give, have they given us an idea, for instance, of how bad you know, they have been hit in monetary figures? Right. This is what we have suffered. This is our bottom line. This is a this are, this, so to yeah. Speak. These are our operational costs, and on the basis of this, we cannot continue with this. Mm. They have not been able to give us that. So you find, you know, a speech that seems to uh, that would normally elicit the in, the sympathy of most of, of many Nigerians because the MD of Access Bank talks about the difficulties mm. uh, of the times, and we all know about these difficulties. But ultimately, without putting figures behind it. Uh, you know, to convince the people that, yes, this is the right path that they want to go. Mm -hmm. It becomes very difficult to swallow. And so some of us begin to think that perhaps they are looking at their bottom line, they are looking at the profits, and they want to, you know, limit the loss of profits, not that they already begin to suffer some operational losses. Mm -hmm.